डॉक्टर अनिल काकोटकर चेयरमैन ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ गवर्नर्स ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूट डॉक्टर देवान खक्कर डायरेक्टर ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट फैकल्टी एंड ऑल माय यंग फ्रेंड्स हियर एंड द वेल विशर्स इट्स अ ग्रेट प्रेजर एंड प्रिविलेज फॉर मी टू जॉइन ऑल ऑफ यू on this happy occasion let me first of all congratulate the graduating class of today and wish all of them the best of luck as they sally forth into the world i hope each one of you will have the good fortune to find an enjoyable and rewarding career in whatever you have set your heart on whether in the world of science and technology or the world of industry and management or in fact any other world you prefer i want to say something today regarding a major new aeronautical initiative that the country is embarking on before picking this subject i wondered about whether it would be appropriate to talk about aeronautics where the total number of aeronautical engineers graduating will probably a small fraction of the total number of engineers in all the other fields present here today but i think there's a special reason why uh, aeronautics may still be relevant because uh, this feature that the number of aeronautical graduates here is small compared to the others you will find also in most aircraft industry and in fact in r&d organizations as well because uh, aeronautics makes great demands on many other disciplines the aircraft gas turbine is probably the most sophisticated piece of mechanical engineering made by man about half the cost of a modern aircraft goes into avionics electronics materials technology has a profound influence on the development of aviation control systems on unstable aircraft like the one on the light combat aircraft for example it is one of the most sophisticated of the kind that uh, electrical engineers handle and it goes on in mathematics and in physics so there is place for everybody in the aeronautical sector and i hope that i can convince you that some very interesting things are likely to happen in coming years in particular in india i've spent a lot of my time in an academic institution some years in industry and several years in public sector r&d and during those years spent in these different organizations I have always wondered just as I am sure many of you have about how India's weight in the world of global aeronautics is less than that in global space my purpose here is not to analyze why this may be so but to point out that it is curious that a country that has interplanetary ambitions should surely be able to do much more than it has in atmospheric flight now i was very happy to learn that in this institute you have recently set up a national center for aerospace innovation and research in collaboration with boeing and the department of science and technology and with indian industry including the national aerospace laboratories as members 
I see this actually as one of many recent indications that the country is now ready for what I like to think of as a new wave in aeronautics. And this new wave is centered on civil aeronautics. And I want to emphasize that. Because aeronautics in India started in the 1940s. And for almost all these six, seven decades, it has concentrated on the military sector. HAL is owned by the Defense Ministry. When uh, a large number of other labs were set up, apart from NAL, which is civilian, most of them have been in defense. And even NAL has most of the time worked on uh, defense, the needs of defense aviation. It's only in recent years that uh, there's been serious thinking about what you may call civil aeronautics. And I make a distinction between civil aeronautics and civil aviation. I'm not talking about the act of flying, but about design, development, manufacture and operation of aircraft in this country. Now perhaps this was understandable a couple of decades ago, as the Indian civil aviation market was still relatively small at that time. However, since the reforms of 1991 and the deregulation of the airline industry that followed some years later, the scene has changed entirely. Deregulation was quickly followed by an extraordinary boom in civil aviation, releasing the long suppressed natural need for air travel in a large country, in particular in a country where many parts are still not quickly or easily accessible by conventional surface transport. If you are in a remote corner, the cheapest way to be able to get there, the cheapest and fastest way, is to lay down an airfield there. Recent events, and in particular the global recession and the price of oil, have curbed that growth for a period of a couple of years, but it's now clear that uh, civil aviation in India is returning to healthy growth in coming years. Now, the most interesting thing about civil aviation in the world today is that its center of gravity is inexorably shifting eastwards. Today already, United States, Europe, and Asia are getting to have equal shares in the global market. No aircraft that cannot be sold in the East is likely to be a success in today's world. So the question really is, how long are we going to be somebody else's customers in our own booming market? Now, to answer this question, we must consider the nature of aeronautics, and I will say a few words about it. The vigorous domestic industry does three things. It enhances national security, which has been one of the justifications for the industry in India till recently. It creates wealth, which is the part which we have not actually looked at very seriously uh, for a long time. It creates wealth not only for itself, but also for other sectors, by the key role it plays in economic activity of various kinds, from mass tourism to upscale business travel and for providing access to remote parts of the country. But apart from all this, aerospace has turned out to be a source of new technologies as well. I earlier mentioned that uh, aerop aerospace has grown by the efforts of work done in many different disciplines, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronics, materials, and so on. But in return, many technologies developed for aircraft have gone back to those fields, 
and found applications in uh, systems and products not related to aeronautics. To cite a few examples, composite materials, advanced control systems, computational fluid dynamics, high-end structural, anal structural analysis software, simulation technologies of various kinds, and so on. So aeronautics borrows from and also advances developments in mechanical, structural, fluid dynamical, electrical, chemical, thermal and materials engineering. Now, aeronautics is therefore a special industry and uh, any country with ambitions about its position in the future would have to give it some very special thought. If we are going to take an initiative in civil aeronautics, what should that be? There's been considerable discussion about this in recent, in the last few years, and I think that one way to look at the future of civil aeronautics would be to define for ourselves a mission somewhat like the following. To define and implement a comprehensive roadmap with appropriate anchor programs. Anchor programs are those which uh, are major national programs uh, to which our growth in the industry can be anchored, so to speak. So that over the next 20 years, let's say, 15 to 20 years, India will become a major player in global civil aeronautics at the component and subsystem as well as the whole aircraft level. With participation from the Indian private sector and when desirable and feasible, foreign industry as well. Now, the question of course is whether we can realize a vision like this. Now, for an answer, I want to look back by about a decade. In May 1999, a monthly magazine published by the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics called Aerospace America carried a special section on Asian aerospace. It's a subtitle, Will the Tiger Roar Again? To understand the context, let me remind you that these were times of a severe financial crisis in Southeast and East Asia, not so much in India as in the recent crisis as well. It was also the time when the technology development of the light combat aircraft, of which all of you will have heard, was at its peak. Carbon fiber wings, flight control systems for the unstable aircraft, to mention only the most critical. While reviewing Asia's difficult times, the magazine said the following. This is 1999. India is emerging as the region's most powerful aircraft manufacturing nation. This is curious because South Korea, China, Taiwan and Japan would seem to have pursued the most practical course for developing their aerospace industries. This accomplishment was attributed in part to how India was a noisis of economic stability with many thriving consumer industries and also to India's policy of independence and non-alignment which gave the country some of the fastest growing technology centers in Asia. That's hard to believe, isn't it? But the country's own response to this extraordinary development that was taking place in India has been extremely mild and on the whole not enthusiastic. But at any rate, can we make the same statements again in 2010? Perhaps we can about India still being economically relatively untouched by the recent recession. But we cannot make that statement about India being home to the hottest Asian aeronautical technology centers. As in so many other areas of science and technology, the Northeast Asian hub, 
that's what I would like to call it. China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong now seems to have a significant lead, leaving India relatively isolated and I'm afraid about a decade behind them. This is particularly evident in civil aeronautics. China is now rolling out A320s from Tianjin. So one of these days, it's quite possible that uh, you'll be flying uh, Indian aircraft in Indian skies using aircraft made in China. It has a cooperation with Embraer regarding the production of the 145. But curiously, almost paradoxically you can say, the most ambitious project today is a 150-seater aircraft called the C919, which is expected to challenge the A320 that they are making now and the Boeing 737. According to the chairman of the company, of the Chinese company which makes this aircraft, their goal is to produce a family of aircraft. It is clear that China wants to be the third force in global civil aeronautics. Many people are already beginning to talk about A, B and C, Airbus, Boeing and China. Now, fortunately, although somewhat late in the day, India has very recently decided to take up a national civil aircraft development program with an empowered high-power high committee chaired by Dr. Madhavan Naya, former chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. And the task of this high-power committee is to study the feasibility of a regional transport aircraft with a capacity around 90 passengers. In the next 15 to 20 years, the Indian civil and military market for aircraft of this class is estimated to be at least 400, 400 to 500. And in the world as a whole, it's about 10 times larger, 5,000 to 6,000 aircraft. With the vast investments in airport infrastructure that's now taking place in the big metros as well as in the smaller towns and cities across the country, such an aircraft can offer dramatic improvements in connectivity. And the invaluable experience that the country has gained with the LCA and the NAL SARS program and the HAT program on the intermediate jet trainer, these provide a solid foundation of technology development and design. So the committee I mentioned will explore the possibility of international partners on the project and of setting up joint ventures and public-private partnerships with industry. All major national agencies, including ISRO, DRDO, HAL, and NAL, have joined the project. And the High Power Committee includes some members representing private industry as well. Well, such a program was long overdue, and I consider it to be the most significant aeronautical initiative since the decision to go ahead on the LCA was made in 1982. Well, that's almost 30 years ago. But the significance of the decision lies in the following. It opens up entirely new horizons for aeronautics in India, an entirely different method of going about, of managing our aeronautical, national aeronautical enterprise. If the High Power Committee achieves the objectives that have been set for it, the structure of Indian aeronautics will be transformed. New and exciting opportunities will be available, in particular for young engineers. NL is busy setting up a new aircraft design center and is looking for a hundred engineers right away, today. But they can't get them. Attending the air shows in Bangalore, I have always been astonished at the natural enthusiasm of young Indians on all matters connected with aerospace. I have also wondered why the Indian aeronautical system has been unable to tap into this enthusiasm. I hope that the new National Civil Aircraft Project will change the national aeronautical scene 
by introducing a vigorous spirit in the community. And as we have certain special advantages in embarking on the development of such a regional air country, its success will make a big difference. We have a large market. We are one of the uh, most cost-effective producers of R&D, international level R&D in the world. We have a thriving engineering services industry, a national policy of respect for, inter for intellectual property rights, which matters very much when we are competing with China, and a globalized private industry. We must build on those advantages. And I want in particular to say that uh, Indians should learn to appreciate, we all of us should learn to appreciate the advantages we have. And one of the great advantages we have is, is really in the kind of young engineers that are graduating today from uh, uh, IIT Bombay. But we should not minimize the enormous challenges either. Civil transport is an entirely different ball game from military aviation. Success demands the right science and technology, but that will not be enough. The financial stakes are huge. Manufacturing needs a great deal more attention. The new environmental concerns, all the way from carbon dioxide and NOx to noise, have to be addressed. Issues connected with certification, safety, efficient operation, maintenance, overhaul, etc. will become very important. Effective financing arrangements, management of a technology intensive industry. All these will make severe demands on our ingenuity and perseverance. It calls most of all for a sophisticated policy regime in government. One that is both supportive and rigorous at the same time. In short, we need to build a whole new ecosystem for civil aeronautics. A large number of elements would have to work together. It is challenging, but given determination and clear vision, the challenges are not insurmountable. So, let me return to all the fresh young graduates of today in all disciplines. I recall here the team of uh, young students from IIT Bombay with their faculty advisors who made such an impressive show at the international micro air vehicle competition in Agra a couple of years ago. But the Bombay team stood out from the rest and I want even at this late stage to compliment the institute and its enthusiastic team for the splendid show they put up there. I hope I hope that the same enthusiasm that I saw there will now inspire many of you here to see that the tasks and the projects that challenge you and the challenges that you like to overcome are something which you should get your attention. That is the only way that we can make Indian Aeronautics play the global role that, given our wealth of talent, our economic, cultural and technological mass, and our ambitions, although generally understated, it is natural for India that we should want to emerge once again. We think of ourselves as an emerging economy. We are actually a re-emerging economy because a couple of hundred years ago uh, Indian and Chinese economies dominated the world. So, it's only natural for India that it should like to re-emerge as a major economic and technological force in the world. And I hope that all of you young people here for graduating from this institute will make that happen and I can assure you it's a dream for which future generations will be grateful when you achieve it. All the best to you and good luck in your careers.